coaches teleconference. All lines have been placed on mute to prevent any background noise. If you would like to ask a question during this conference, please press star in the number one on your telephone keypad. To withdraw your question, press the pound key. I will now turn the call over to Mike Kern. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you, Stephanie, and we'll get right to it. We do have Coach Greg Lansing of Indiana State on the line with us. The Sycamore is headed to play Drake on Wednesday, later in the week back home against Illinois State on Saturday, coming off of a 73-58 win against Loyola on Saturday. The Sycamores find themselves 1-1 one one in league play, and at this time we'd like to welcome Coach Lansing to the line. Good morning, Greg. Good morning, Mike. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. How are you? I'm pretty good, thanks. Good, good. Let's talk about Drake. Uh, preview is Wednesday's game for us, and then we'll open it up for some questions from the group. Okay. Uh, you know, just coming off our game, I thought I knew we'd get a, a really good uh, shot from a, a very good Loyola team uh, coming off a, a tough home loss against Southern, who obviously is, is playing as well as anybody in the league. And uh, I thought the first 20 minutes uh, were just okay, but I really kind of uh, found in the second half we played about um, – offensively as good as we have been with sharing the basketball and working it in and out and, and doing the things we've been trying to do uh, throughout the year. Defense has been pretty solid. Guys are fighting hard, and, and we're, the new guys are coming along. Now we got a, a, a real good team. Coach Jack Letty has Drake much approved. Um, I've heard people say that, um, you know, with no seniors, they could be one of the, the favorites going for, like, even for next year. So they're really building towards something. Um, we didn't play very well when we didn't. we went in there last year. Um, you know, it's always a good homecoming for me and getting to see my family. So uh, we're getting ready to go. I need a couple of good days of practice ahead yet after uh, yesterday's uh, yesterday's good one. We couldn't do much, but uh, excited about getting over to Des Moines. Thank you, Greg. Let's get to the questions now for Coach Lansing. Questions from the media for the coach. Our first question comes from a line of Todd Golden with the Tribune Star. Hey, Greg. Hey, Todd. Hey, uh, Drake has some familiar faces, but they also have a couple uh, of, of new contributors, Graham Woodward and Kayla you know, Abrahamson, uh, jump out. What do they bring to the table for Drake, those two guys? <laughs> two real good players, two guys that can score the basketball. I think uh, uh, Woodward especially, just uh, you know, looking at point guards, just a tough competitor, fiery, uh, doing the things I think that uh, uh, Rays wanted to do there and running the offense and playing at both ends of the floor. And very familiar with Kale, uh, obviously, from uh, being right there in Des Moines. Uh, knew plenty about him, especially when he was playing for Coach Woodley uh, there at, uh, at Valley. So uh, really good player, really good scorer, does a lot of different things. He's a tough matchup uh, for anybody. He's had some huge games. And uh, we're gonna have our hands full. You know, this is this is a good this is a good team uh, uh, that's coming along, kind of like us, just finding their way yet. And and uh, we're looking to get their best shot, and hopefully, we'll get them ours. Yeah, they have four starters who can uh, shoot the three, among others. Uh, the challenge that they present not only defensively because they'll spread you out, but also from a rebounding standpoint because obviously the recovery is uh, you know going to be significant uh, trying to account for all those three point shooters. Yeah, that's tough. That's you know anybody that knocks down three point shots and can spread you out like that. It certainly gives your interior guys and the big fella uh, in there is a, is a is a tough guy to guard. And, and he hurt us last year, and uh, that's what they beat us with too. You know they they really like to to create uh, shots for each other, spread that floor, and try to get the, the try to get Big E isolated in there. So uh, anybody's knocking down shots is, is makes it really tough to defend. It's one of the tougher trips in the league, maybe an underrated tough trip. I mean, the Knapp Center is kind of unique among the, the league's gyms. Uh, what do you think makes this, uh, you know, or can make this a difficult trip at times? Oh, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I love going to Des Moines. I really do. It's a, it's home for me, and my family's right there. And, and I just think that any time you go on the road, it's it's not easy to win, especially when they have good teams. And, and, and Ray has continued to build that since he's been there. They're uh, increasing their talent level. I think the support uh, has always been pretty good. Uh, you know, Drake basketball fans, even though they might be Hawk or Cyclone fans as well, they come to support you, and, and it, it's not easy to win any place, especially when the team's good. Um, everybody plays a little better at home maybe. You know, shots start falling. I always I always thought that that was a, a good shooter's gym with, with uh, some soft rims, and hopefully we'll uh, find a middle of the net too soon. All right, sounds good. Thanks. Thanks, Todd. 
Your next question comes from Paul Solonkoff with the Wichita Eagle. Uh, hello, Greg. Uh, hey, Paul. That, just from, from looking at the stats, the Sycamores are struggling to score, but your defensive numbers are really good. How are you getting your team to play hard on defense, even you know, going through some rough spots offensively? Well, that's always the challenge, Paul. It really is. You know, you, and we have been guilty of it, probably as guilty as anybody in the league. Uh, it, it's tough for guys, when they, whether they're missing a shot or they turn it over or, a, or a, you know, a contested quick shot. Uh, that really turns into to poor defense, and we've been guilty of that. We're guilty of that at Evansville. Uh, we've been guilty of that in some of the losses we've had. And what we've really talked about is each possession is its own entity. It's kind of got its own life, and, and you can't let what happened at one end uh, turn into something negatively at the off, off or at the defensive end. And we're getting better with that. You know, our our it's a game of runs, and the, the runs we've we've tried to decrease as much as possible and lengthen our good runs, but. I think we have, I, I, you know, I I'm, I'm still think we're a good shooting team. Our stats weren't very good uh, early in the year, so we're getting better with that. And I think we're trying to uh, do what we, we can to improve offensively. I, I still think we have a good offensive team. We just got to share the basketball more and, and play inside out. And I think uh, in the second half uh, Saturday, we did that better than we've done all year. Thank you. Thanks. Coach, that was your final question. Thank you for your time. Good luck uh, in Des Moines. I appreciate it. Thanks. All right. See you, Greg. Next coach with us is Ben Jacobson of Northern Iowa. The Panthers are at Missouri State Wednesday back at home against Drake on Saturday, coming off of a hard-fought loss at Southern Illinois on Saturday. Morning, Ben. Hey, good morning, Mike. How are you? Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year. We're uh, we're doing good. Good. Let's talk about the Bears. Um, young, young team. They've got a lot of... Uh, young players, but some guys that had a lot of minutes last year. Talk about the Bears, and then we'll open it up for some questions for you. Yeah, you know, they uh, they just got done playing a really good game with Evansville, and, uh, you know, I know everybody's uh, obviously feels good about it, knows how good Evansville is. Uh, and uh, and Paul's guys played them, uh, you know, for 30-plus minutes. They played them possession for possession, and, and uh, they're doing a good job of changing their defenses, and, and uh you know, some of those young guys uh, have played well. You know, uh, Obadiah Church is is a good young guy. Uh, Jared Dixon, you know, started the game against Evansville, and I thought he played well. Uh, you know, Miller gives him, uh, you know, a different kind of point guard, and, and he's played well for him as a new guy. And you know, it. Uh, um, so they, uh, you know, they, they did some good things in their last game. So, like always, I know we all say it, Mike, but like always, uh, you go on the road and you play against anybody in the league, you're going to have to play good. Thank you, Coach. Let's get to the questions now for Coach Ben Jacobs. Questions from the media. To ask a question, please press star, then the number one. You're Charles M. Keypad. Again, that's star, then the number one. Our first question comes from Paul Southern Trump with the Wichita Eagle. Hello, Ben. Hey, give us a, uh, a read on Southern Illinois. They're obviously playing well. What's changed with them? What's gotten them off on such a good start? Yeah, they uh they, they are playing good, Paul. They uh uh you know, a couple things. You know, one, the the guys that they added to the to uh to that roster, uh, they are really making a difference for them. Uh Rodriguez is doing a doing a good job for him at the point and he him coming in and being able to play the point has allowed Bean to get off the you know, get off that position and you know, even though he's still got the ball in his hands a lot. He isn't bringing it. Uh, he isn't responsible for for running the team, and I think that's been a really good change for them. Uh, and then you know, coming in off the bench, you know, their guard play is so much better than it was last year. Uh, coming off that bench, and and the guys that are you know the four starters that are back, uh, are, you know, they're just they're better. But I would tell you, Barry did a great job of adding to that roster, and and then the uh, the the two the two other things that. Uh, that we saw on Saturday, you know, Juan Bean is playing at a tremendously high level. You know, he he made some some tough shots, uh, and he had made them coming into our game, Paul. But you know, I you know with Jeremy Morgan's length and with West's ability to to sit down and move, and he's got some length as well. You know, I thought we forced him into some tough jump shots, but he continued to make them, and so he he made some he made some great plays. And then they're playing with some confidence. And they're playing with some toughness, and 
so they you know they've got uh, uh, I think all of those things make them a little different than what they were, certainly different than what they were a year ago. Thank you. Yep. Again, to ask a question, star then the number one. Okay, this is your final question. Uh, thank you for your time, and good luck this week. We'll talk to you next week. Okay, thanks, Mike. See you, then. Yep. Next scheduled coach for us is Ray Jacoletti of Drake, uh, the Bulldogs facing Indiana State at home Wednesday night, and then at Northern Iowa on Saturday. We'll hold for just a moment as we get a hold of Coach Jacoletti. And we do have Coach Ray Giacoletti with us at Drake. The Bulldogs, as I mentioned, are facing Indiana State in just two days, uh, Wednesday at, at home. Good morning, Coach. Morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Uh, good. Good. Well, let's, let's talk about uh, Indiana State coming to town. They were coming off of a win against a, a very good Loyola team. And what can you do? Preview, uh, preview the game on Wednesday for us, if you would. Yeah, we just obviously with playing yesterday. I only watched a little bit of Indian State here, but um, obviously three very good perimeters uh, that have been together now for a full year into their second year. Um, and so it starts with those guys, very athletic, um, share the ball really well, um, can score in a variety of different ways. Um, so first and foremost, you know, offensively anyway, um, those three guys uh, make Indiana State go. You've got a couple of newcomers that are playing very well at a, at a high level. Could you talk about Kale and, and Graham's uh, contributions for you so far? Yeah, those guys have stepped in and, and helped us, uh, I think, make us competitive. We, we still got a couple more you know, steps to take to be able to go from being competitive to winning games. Uh, but they've certainly helped us get to the competitive point. Peace. Thank you. Let's go ahead and open it up for some questions from the media for you. Questions for Coach Ray Jacoletti. Our first question comes from Andrew Logue with Des Moines Register. Hey, Coach. Um, Andrew. I wanted, to ask, I wanted to ask you, you know, I think we all thought Bram would be able to come in and, and help you run the offense and do things, uh, but maybe – at least to me, I didn't know he'd score as much or if he is an effective a scorer as he has come for you. You know, is that just something we didn't see when he played at other schools? Or is he is that something he's developed in the, the last couple of years? No, I think he's always been a score first guy. Um I think, you know, learning the other pieces of running a team are uh he's working hard at and you know, we, we watch film with him after each game to try to help him with the nuances of, you know, balance and making others better and and uh, being able to pick his spots uh, where he can score the basketball. With his size, he's still able to kind of get open shot. Maybe that also surprised me a little. Um, talk about just his, maybe his court sense or how he's kind of developed that ability to, to find that opening in a, in a defense to, to get a shot off when otherwise it, it might be a bad matchup for him. Yeah, I, you know, again, I, I think you go back to high school, I mean, he, he's been a guy that has always been able to score. Um, but I, I think, I don't think that's, uh, I think that's the easy part for him right now, the, the part that, that we're trying to help him with and, and he's trying to get better at is, is running the team and, and making others better. And if you could go get, you know, five assists a night, that's 10 points right there. And, um, you know, if, if you can go get 12, that's a year count for 22 points. So, um, 
I think the scoring piece is is relatively um, he's comfortable with. Okay. All right. Cool. Thanks, Coach. Yep. Your next question comes from Todd Golden with the Tribune Star. Hey, Ray. My my question was asked, so I'm in I'm in good shape. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Again, to ask a question, start in the number one. Ray, there are no other questions in the queue for you. We'll let you go at this time. Thank you for your participation. We'll talk to you next week. Good luck this week. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. All right. Bye-bye. That's a minute or two ahead of our scheduled time for Coach Paul Lusk of Missouri State. We'll have Paul on in just a second. The Bears this week will have Northern Iowa on Wednesday at home, and then they're on the road at Loyola on Saturday, both games on ESPN3. And we do have Coach Paul Lusk with us at Missouri State. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Mike. Yeah, Happy New Year. Same to you. Uh, first game this week is Northern Iowa at home, and the uh, Panthers are having a, a great year. They've had some very sig significant wins out of conference. We'll talk about the, the game on Wednesday, and then we'll open it up for some questions for you. Well, they're very talented. Um, I think... Uh, you know, they space the floor. They've got a high skill level. Uh, they've got experience. I think Wes Washburn's um, just elevated his game to where uh, he's one of the very best guards in the country. I really believe that. And uh, so they're, they're a difficult matchup. Hey, you look at their, their three-point percentage in the wins and the three-point percentages in the losses. Is it as simple as defending the three? Um, it's certainly an important part of their game. Yeah, they, they they put you in a bind. Uh, they'll just run a high ball screen, and uh, if you switch it, you got your big on Washburn. He can break you down, then you overhelp, then it's threes. If you don't switch it, he gets to the rim, and help's got to come from somewhere else. But uh, they're they're lethal. I mean, they are absolutely lethal with their three point percentage. Um, they've just they've got a lot of guys that can make shots. Thank you, Paul. Let's get now to the questions for you from the media. Questions for Coach Paul Lusk. Please press stars in the number one to ask your question. Stars in the number one. Our first question comes from Daniel Alar with the Evansville Courier. Hey, Paul. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Uh, good, good. I um, wanted to ask you about uh, Evansville's Muscovichis. Obviously, had a big game against you guys, and he's been putting up really good numbers all year. Um, from an opposing coach's perspective, uh, what have you seen out of his growth uh, the last the last couple of years. Well, I mean, you always knew he was going to be a a great player, um, and I think uh, with the way he's rebounding, um, it's just uh, he's the best rebounder in the country, and I think that translates and 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 dominant. He had 21 rebounds against us. Um, he's a two-handed guy. He does everything with two hands. He's got a very good motor. Um, Offensively, he's a great runner. He scores off of their sets. Uh, he's just a—he's a terrific player. He gave us a lot of problems. You know, we were in the game, and 
Um, we were in the, in the game for about 30 minutes, and and uh, we missed some free throws and had some turnovers, and, and they, they are an experienced team. They capitalized on it. But uh, he's, a, he's a real problem. He's one of the best bigs in the country. All right, thank you. Again, to ask a question, start them in number one. Paul, I wanted to ask you about uh, several of your newcomers having an impact for you. Daquan Miller certainly um, scoring a lot for you and leading your team scoring. But talk about Obadiah Church and, and then Ryan Freckler, who was inserted into a game after about right. five games not playing. And talk about those guys and their energy. Well, I think Daquan is just going to keep getting better. Um, it's been helpful for him to have Dorian out there. Uh, but now with Dorian being out, you know, Daquan has to take on a bigger role. And I thought he did a nice job against Evansville. Uh, he missed some shots, but he has four assists and no turnovers. Um, I think he'll continue to get better. I think his percentages will continue to climb. Um, Obadiah Church for a freshman has just been terrific. Um, really, really good. I think it's, uh, if you look around the country, it's, it's hard for a freshman uh, anywhere, uh, but uh, he's doing a very good job for us. Uh, he had seven and seven against Evansville. He continues to develop. He continues to grow uh, with the growth of his game. Ryan Crepwell was a young man that we planned on redshirting. And, uh, we weren't able to do that when Bruder went down, uh, as well as another guard, and, and he's done good things. And then uh, Jared Dixon is our other freshman. He had 10 the other day. He continues to grow. Um, Dixon, Creclo, and Daquan, those three guys, you know, they're, they much make up our backcourt now and first-year guys in the league, but I think they're doing really good things. Thank you, Paul. Appreciate your time this morning. Good luck this week. Thank you. All right, bye. We'll hold for just a moment. There's a change in today's schedule. Next week, we'll go back to our regular schedule. But uh, moving Coach Dan Muller up to the 10:39 slot and switching with with Barry Henson, who will go at 11 11 o'clock or 11:03 exactly. But uh, next week, Barry at 10:39 and Dan Muller back in his regular slot at 11:03. But we'll have Coach Muller on in just a moment. Redbirds coming off of a win at break yesterday, 67-62, one of four league teams that are 2-0 in conference play through the first weekend. As we wait for, for Dan to join us, we do have uh, four teams uh, rated in the top 87 of the uh, RPI, the Collegiate Basketball News RPI. The last year, the league had five in the top 100 at the end of the year, and in 2014, three teams in the top 100. Uh, currently, we have four. Southern Illinois and Evansville off to quick starts with 13 and two overall record. They join. 12 other teams nationally with uh, 13 or more victories. The NBC is one of just three leagues with multiple teams with 13 or more wins, including the Big Ten, who has four, and the Big East with two. Hello. And we, we have, hey, good morning, Dan. How are you? Hey, good morning. Good. How are you doing? Happy New Year. How are you? Happy New Year. Well, I'm doing just fine. Thank you. Shut that down. Good. Nice comeback win against uh, Drake yesterday. A, a tough, tough opponent, obviously, at home, and a, a nice win yesterday. But this week you got Loyola. Uh, talk about that game first, and later in the week you got Indiana State. But we'll focus on Loyola. What do you know about the Ramblers? Well, um, you know, a, a tough start to the conference, but certainly can – can get you in a lot of different ways. James is playing extremely well. They have an inside presence. They have they're shooting the ball terrific from the perimeter. Um, they're balanced scoring. Um, it's certainly going to be a tough game on Wednesday. Thank you, Dan. Let's get now to the questions for you. Questions for Coach Dan Muller. Please press stars in the number one to ask your question. Stars in the number one.
Again, that star is in the number one to ask a question. Coach, talk about talk about your team and uh, Devon isn't exactly what you expected to be getting from Devon, but talk about some of the contributions from the other guys. Uh, uh, Teddy Hawkins' uh, expectations as a, as a sophomore certainly. Talk about his contributions if you would. Yeah, we've had some ups and downs, unfortunately, this year, and that's kind of why we have the record that we have. And we had a tough non-conference schedule, but we didn't handle it very well. So we haven't had a lot of consistency with with a whole lot of guys. Deontay has been a guy who's, who's been very consistent. Um, his shot has not always fallen, but he's shooting it better lately. Uh, rebounded it well. Um, terrific defender. Um, Paris Lee has played his best game probably of the year yesterday. And hopefully we got him back on track. Uh, Tony Wills has given us great minutes. Kyle's been in and out of foul trouble, and he's had a couple concussions already, so that's affected them. But you know, every night we've got different guys that are stepping up, which is good. Uh, but we certainly need more consistency for some of those guys. Thank you, Coach. Talk talk a little bit. You mentioned that the, the non-conference portion of the season, and um, several of our, our league schools played a very challenging non-conference and that was no exception for you guys. Talk about your scheduling philosophy and, and playing a tough schedule and getting you ready for the conference campaign. Well, I've, I, I would like to schedule very aggressively most years and um, certainly this year was no exception. Sometimes you can't control that as far as who you're going to play in the MTE. Uh, we, we happen to play Maryland, um, even though we scheduled that you know a couple years ago. But um, we had some opportunities to to beat some very good teams that we didn't take advantage of, and that, that that was disappointing. But hopefully, we'll look back in another month, and those games pay dividends because we've grown as a team. Dan, there are no questions in the queue for you. We'll let you go. Thank you for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Good yeah. luck this week. Thanks. All righty. Bye bye. We are just a couple minutes ahead of our, our schedule, but we do have Coach Marty Simmons of Evansville on the line with us, so we'll jump ahead. And Evansville off to a great start, as I mentioned, 13-2 and overall, 2-0 and in league play, and Egidius Miscavich is having a tremendous year, a double-double almost every night, Coach. Talk, talk about his play, and, of course, you're getting a lot of scoring from DJ as well, and, and good morning, happy new year. All right, same to you. Um, yeah, he's been really good. Uh, he's had a great attitude. Uh, you know, he's always been that way. Uh, I think he's just, uh, you know, as as you would think, matured physically and mentally, and, you know, he's gotten his body better. And But, uh, you know, from the rebounding standpoint, he's certainly taken that to a, to a different level. Uh, he's always been a good rebounder, but he seems to be going outside of his area. He's got good anticipation on uh, on where the ball is going. And, uh, you know, DJ's been been off to a good start for us as well and uh you know we just need to to keep working and keep getting better thank you coach let's get now to the questions for you questions for, for coach marty simmons please press star in the number one again star in the number one to ask your question our first question comes from dave reynolds with the peoria journal star morning marty Good morning, Dave. Um, just wanted to ask you, um, from an overall standpoint, how you'd rate your team's uh, progress during the non-conference season and then as we head into the conference play here. Well, I felt like you know in the in the non-conference, uh, you know we played some we played some pretty good basketball and and finished on a pretty good note. Uh, I don't think that that we've necessarily come back maybe as strong as what we we finished. Uh, you know we've been pretty fortunate out of the gate here uh, to to win a couple games, but but I think we can play better. Uh, we're going to have to play better. We've got to get better. Uh, but that's kind of what happens a lot of times when you get into league play. I mean, it's uh, you know everybody knows everybody's strengths and weaknesses, and and uh, it gets tougher. What particular areas do you see the need for improvement? Well, I thought in the non-conference we did a much better job of valuing the ball, taking care of the ball. The first two conference games in the first halves of both games, we've turned it over 10, 11 times. Uh, 
we've got to be more balanced with our rebounding. Gideus is, is, has really stepped it up, but, but just overall as a team, you know, our rebounding and defensively, um, you know, we, we need, we need to be better there as, as well. Thanks, Marty. You bet. Our next question comes from Paul Sullentrop with the Wichita Eagle. Hello, Marty. Uh, Jalen Brown looks like he's really improved. Uh, tell me a little bit about his his game and how he's progressed. You know, he's been really good, you know, his entire career here. It's kind of been a two-headed monster with him and Boo Gibson. And unfortunately, Boo's been out with injury and, and uh, JB's really stepped up. I thought it started last year really towards the end of the year and even in the CIT tournament. I mean, he played outstanding, and, and I think he's just become more confident. Uh, you know, he's a good athlete. He's playing really aggressive. Uh, but I think more than anything, just playing playing with confidence. You know, he's a guy that, that likes to work and wants to be good and is in the gym getting better. And I think it's paying off for him. And then uh, Mislav, boy, his three-point shooting percentage is really up. Looks like his turnovers are down pretty dramatically. Is that him just getting more comfortable in his second year? I think that's that has a lot to do with it. He's, he gets in here and shoots a lot. You know, I think he feels real real comfortable with his with his his stroke right now and uh, just experience uh, maturity. I think he's made uh, made made better decisions. You know, with the basketball and. Uh, I think that's a result of it. Uh, when you're getting ready to go into place, so Wichita State, where they have such a long home winning streak, do you do anything, uh, you know, to convince your guys that you know that they can win on the road in a place like that? How do you kind of approach that that issue? Yeah, we just try to approach it like every other road game. I mean, we're just going to prepare as hard as we possibly can. We're going to practice. I mean, it's hard to emulate Wichita State in a lot of ways. I mean. Uh, they're just, you know, they, they're talented, they're skilled, they're tough. Their attention to details as good as anybody that 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 I've ever coached against or played against. I mean, they're they're so uh, just focusing on the process, and the, the areas that 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 we have to be competitive at to to have a chance. Seems like a lot of coaches will say we've got to kind of survive that first, you know, five minutes, get to the media timeout, you know, and keep the crowd from getting. Real energized, that kind of thing. Is that particularly important in your in your mind, also? I think so. Yeah, I mean, they got some of the best fans in the nation, and uh, uh, just really admire how they cheer for the home team. I mean, they they, they really, I mean, the atmosphere there is incredible. So, um, you know, just you know, everybody being on the same page, and and uh, you know, our ability to execute. Which you know, and certainly the atmosphere can, but but they're just so well prepared, and uh, again, their attention to detail and the way they play is 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 as good as any I've seen. Thank you. Coach, you've had the benefit of uh, starting the same starting lineup all fifteen games. How's the overall health of your your bench? Everything everything going okay health wise? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Boo Gibson uh, had his third surgery. Ah, I don't think it's been a week. So we'll have some decisions to make there as he gets gets better. Uh, but knock on wood, uh, we've been we've been pretty fortunate. I think everybody goes through their knickknacks here and there, and and uh, we're certainly going through that as well. But uh, we've been pretty healthy. Marty, thank you for your time this morning. Good luck at Wichita State and later in the week against Bradley. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Next coach on the line to join us is uh, Porter Moser of Il- or, uh, Loyola. We'll have Porter on in just a, just a moment. A couple of notes on some Evansville players as we uh, let Marty go, but uh, DJ Ballantyne uh, continues to lead the nation in uh, active scoring of, of all career career scoring for active players. And Agidius Miscavichus is now leading the nation in rebounding. Should they um, end up leading the league in scoring and rebounding, they'll have done that three straight years. Both of those teammates had led the league in scoring in each of the last two years. Anthony Bean is currently leading in the league in scoring, just slightly ahead of DJ.
sounds like we have Coach Mulzer with us. Good morning, Porter. Morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good, good. Let's talk about your, your next game on the schedule. Is Illinois State uh, certainly a, a big game for you, as every conference game is, but starting 0-3 is nothing anybody wants to do. So talk about Illinois State for us and the challenges you'll have on Wednesday. You know, they're, they're playing, you know, you, you watch their Drake game, and they just they play really hard. Uh, they're obviously just tremendous size and athleticism, um, and, you know, that poses a problem rebounding for us. So um, they do a great job of turning you over and converting on the turnovers. And, uh, you know, those are all keys. Rebounding uh, and handling the pressure are always big keys when you play them. And talk about, talk about the health of your team. I know you've had up and downs with people out of, in and out of the lineup, but certainly uh, um, when, when you guys are all in all cylinders and everything's healthy, a uh, much better team for you. But talk about the health of your team right now. Well, like any team, you've got to get your leaders playing well, and we've, we've got to get our leaders playing well. Um, you know, Montel James, uh, you know, losing Christian Thomas, he was the he, – Montel got a lot of good minutes last year and, and played a nice role for us, and new year, new role. Um, losing uh, losing Christian, and uh, you know he had the back injury. He's back from it, but we we've got to play get him consistent. And and then and then Milton, you know he tweaked his ankle in Notre Dame. Um, it's it's nothing extremely serious. Probably a little bit more mental um, than physical based on last year. And uh, we just he, Milton's so good for us, and we just got to get him to that level again. And uh, you know like most teams, they feed off your leaders, and when your leaders are struggling. Um, you know, you, you seem to struggle. So we just we just got to get some confidence um, in getting our leaders going. Thank you, Porter. Let's get now to the questions for the coach. Questions from the media for Coach Porter Moser. Please press star and the number one to ask your question. Again, star and the number one. Again, that's star and the number one to ask a question. Our first question comes from Jim Benson with the Bloomington Pentagraph. Uh, Porter, uh, obviously you guys came out of last year with a lot of confidence and momentum uh, winning the, the, the CBI. Um, is that confidence shaking a little bit right now, or where would you kind of rate the team's confidence right now? No, I don't know if it's, it, it is a confidence thing, Jim. Um, I, I just think that, you know, Christian, Thomas, and Joe were kind of our alpha dogs. And we just don't seem to have an alpha dog right now. And um, you know, we've we've played well in spurts. We've you know we've we played the Creighton game really well. We've had some really good games. Um, and the thing about confidence is, it, it, you can get it going back quickly. You you can get your momentum going back quickly. And it's very early. There's no and we just uh, you know it, it's a lot easier to get a guy that's really good playing well than a guy that's really bad playing well. And we, we got a guy that's really good. In Milton, that we need to get playing well, and and I have all the confidence in the world he is, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll get that going. And um, I, we were better as the year went on last year, um, and and that's what's hopefully going to happen. Um, but I, I think we're, you know, especially this early in the season, we're we're you're 40 minutes away from getting that confidence arrow pointing up. Thanks. See you Wednesday. All right, Jim. We'll see you. Porter, that was it. Thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Uh, good luck on Wednesday. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Next scheduled coach is Brian Wardle of Bradley. We'll have Coach Wardle on in just a moment. The Braves this week will uh, face Southern Illinois on Wednesday at home and then at Evansville on Saturday in Evansville.
you guys go down and do that film session. I got to do this in Valley. And we do have Coach Brian Wardle on the line with us. Good morning, Coach. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing okay. Doing all right. Good. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. But let's talk about your, your week this week. And Southern Illinois and Evansville are two teams that are sitting at 13-2 and two and have had tremendous starts for the season, both 2-0 and oh in league play. And uh, certainly the schedule, uh, challenging to start, start your conference season, uh, having started with Northern Iowa and Wichita State. Uh, but talk about the Southern Illinois and their opening at your place on, on Wednesday. Well, Gene, you know, bring them on. We've seen we've seen all kind of, we've seen some really really good teams all year. Um, obviously, we started off with Northern Iowa and Wichita State, and now we got two teams, you know, with the best records in the league on, in our next two. So um, it's going to be you know an unbelievable challenge where our team just we need to play we need to be more competitive. We need to play tougher, and um, we're going to have to just really as Bradley brand of basketball. We need to get better. It's not as much as what Southern Illinois does or Evansville. We have to take care of some things in house and get better at some in some areas in order to put ourselves in position to have a chance. Coach, the win the win loss record not where anybody wants it, but uh, talk about the team uh, chemistry, the team morale, and certainly you got a young team, the youngest in the NCAA. Yeah, I mean, you know, our record it, it is kind of where it's, you know you people say your record tells you where your team's at. I would say that's pretty accurate with our group. We kind of knew that going into the season with our non-conference that we were going to have a challenge to win some games. Um, and I thought we have moments of playing well. We have moments where we compete and we execute. And then we just have moments, segments where we just break down and, and where we really struggle. And a foul trouble is, has been an issue for us all year. And, and that's going to be a key against Southern Illinois and Evansville is that we're going to have to play smarter and play tough, play competitive, but play smarter and not have silly fouls. And I think that's been a big issue for us. But overall, morale is great. I mean, these kids are working. Um, we're, we're finding victories within every loss. You know, we got to win the little little, the little victories we can find. We're finding, and, and there are some improvements here and there. It's hard to tell with the box score or the final score, but uh, we're slowly getting there. But, you know, bottom line is we're playing freshmen a lot of minutes, and we're not seeing a lot of teams that play freshmen. So we're we got to continue to learn and grow and, and stay positive and just be in the gym and keep working hard. Thank you, Coach. Let's, let's get now to the questions from the media for you. Questions for Coach Brian Wardle. Please press star in the number one again. That's star in the number one. Hello. Again, that's star in the number one to ask your question. Coach, you mentioned your, the freshman on your, on your roster. You have one that's from Saint, the St. Louis area. Can you talk about the development of Ronnie Suggs and how he's, how he's doing for you? Yeah, Ronnie's coming along. You know, he's, he's, he's a young man that um, came in as a scorer, and, and I think he's just really struggled to find his shot so far. And, and um, I like that he's been aggressive and take the shots, um, but he's learning a lot, like all our freshmen are, just about the – being ready to shoot, the length and athleticism and how quickly teams can recover on defense and, and challenge shots. And um, He's a young man that I think has a, has a very bright future. He's learning the work ethic that it takes off the floor to be really good at this level, the extra film, the extra shooting, all those things that it takes to be good. He's really coming along in that, those areas. and um, We need him to score and we need him to come off that bench and give us a punch uh, and make some baskets and just right now, he's you know he's getting some shots. I like the looks he's got. He's just we just got to find a way to knock him down and and keep working with him because I think he's a a wing that can shoot the ball, but just hasn't shown it yet when it comes to percentages and on paper. Coach, there are no other questions in the queue for you. Thank you for your time this morning. Good luck this week. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. All right. Thanks, Brian. We do have Coach Barry Henson of Southern Illinois on the line with us. The Salukis at 13 and 2 overall, 2 and 0 in league play, playing Bradley on Wednesday, and then at home against Wichita State uh, on Saturday. Good morning, Barry. Good morning, guys. Yeah, thank you for uh, doing the switcher and the schedule this week. Appreciate your flexibility. I'm a flexible guy. I take a lot of yoga. 
Well, let's talk about Bradley. You just heard some of Brian's comments. They're obviously a very young team, the youngest team in the NCAA in terms of experience. Uh, but they're, they're a battling team. And talk about the Braves' force, and then we'll open it up for some questions. Well, I think the only thing I have to tell our players, we haven't won here since we've been here. So that's, you know, it's, I've been, I've been, uh, I've been in this league a long time, Mike. Uh, I guess I've been here longer than anybody else. But uh, uh, it's a tough place to play. <clears throat> you look at how their crowd and the city supports their basketball. They're second in attendance. And, uh, you know, it's just it's just a tough place to play. So they certainly have our focus. And, uh, you know, we're we, we, we just trying to take one game at a time. It's a big deal for us today. Thank you, Coach. Let's get now to the questions for you. Questions for Coach Barry Henson. Press star in the number one to ask your question. Star in the number one. Our first question comes from Dave Reynolds of the PR Journal Star. Hey, Barry. Hi, Dave. Um, most of us consider you guys a surprise team in the league. Um, do you and your team think of yourselves that way, or did you kind of see this coming uh, before the rest of us did? I don't think anybody saw this coming, Dave. I mean... And then when you say most of us, you're saying 100%, aren't you? Uh, I am. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, including the, uh, the uh, everybody in Southern Illinois. Um, the one thing that we did, or I should say I did, I, I very seldom do I use the word I, but after the mass exodus last year, <clears throat> I really challenged myself. I challenged my staff. And I challenged our players, those who were returning, and anybody new that came into the program, we really challenged them. And when I say challenged, our off-season workouts, our preseason workouts, everything was as hard as we've ever been in anything that we've ever done. Our whole mentality was, if these guys are going to leave us, let's make them leave before the season starts. And we really went after them. And uh, the byproduct was the guys kind of bonded together, and consequently, it's really helped us. And then, if you could just um, discuss some of the uh, new guys that have made contributions for you, and some of the factors that other factors maybe that have led to this on the court. Well, I think that's the beauty of it. I mean, I think everybody in our program <clears throat> has made some type of contribution. We had two redshirt freshmen that we really did think all along would be really special for us, Armand Fletcher and Austin Wire. We signed two JUCO guards that we really thought would help us, Mike Rodriguez and Leo Vincent, and uh, they haven't let us down at all. We really felt like our veterans would, were good. I mean, we felt like Anthony was under a lot of stress last year because his support cast wasn't very supportive, whether it be on the floor or off the floor. Uh, had a lot of jealousy issues. Um, Anthony is playing as comfortable and as stress-free uh, as I've ever seen him. He doesn't feel like he has to score. Therefore, he plays a lot more comfortable and consequently is scoring more. Uh, if he can't score, such as St. Louis and Murray, the other guys pick up the slack. Tyler Smith-Peters is playing better. I said at our media day he would have a great year. He is. Sean O'Brien's having uh, the best time of his career. Bola Alanian and Ibi Jimbe are playing well. Dang Leak has come off the bench and really been a big plus for us in a lot of games. So, you know, everybody that I just talked about is kind of things that we suspected, even through the recruitment in Michael and Leo, we felt like they would help us a bunch. Thanks, Barry. Thanks, Dave. Your next question comes from Paul Sutherland Drop with the Wichita Eagle. Barry, the two junior college guards, how have they made Anthony's Life easier, I guess. Paul, both of them can shoot, both of them can score, and one of them's a true point guard. Where Anthony, Anthony's only played 
a handful of possessions at point guard for us this year. He's back to his natural position. Uh, Sean O'Brien, uh, tell me a little bit more about his improvements. Well, it's not, uh, Paula, you know, I'm, I don't want to really think he's become this great player. Sean didn't even practice in the summer and didn't practice in the fall. He's got uh, a medical issue that we can't practice him very much. The difference in Sean O'Brien is his confidence. He's got an enormous amount of confidence, and he was his own worst enemy. As a freshman, in the last 18 games, he was really good. His sophomore year, he started off in the first six games, averaging a double-double, and then he just lost his confidence. But the kid's playing with great confidence. It's not because of any extra work he's done, because he hasn't done any. He can't do it because of his medical issues. So, you know, it's just a confidence-related issue. Uh, I watched Saturday's game. It looked like it was a really good crowd at SIU Arena. Are fans starting to come back? Is, is that place going to get back to the atmosphere maybe it was a, a few years ago? Well, we had fans leaving the game, Paul, and saying it hadn't been like that since 2005. So uh, they said, I don't know how we could have, they said we had 1,000 tickets left. I don't know where we could have put them. So, um, yeah, it, it's getting back to the good old days. Thank you. Thanks, Paul. Harry, that was your final line of questioning. Thanks for your time this morning. Good luck at Bradley on Wednesday. Okay, Michael. Thanks. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Thank you. We do have Coach Greg Marshall of Wichita State on the line with us. The Shockers open up their week at, at home against Evansville on Wednesday and then on the road at Southern Illinois on Saturday. Happy New Year, Greg. Welcome. Hey, thanks, Mike. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Well, Good. Let's talk about your week. Uh, First game on, on the docket is Evansville at home. They've got some, some superstars on that team, and Gideon Miscavichis and D.J. Ballantyne playing at a high level, as we knew they would this year. But talk about that game on Wednesday, and we'll open it up for some questions for you. You know, um, it's been four years. This will be the fourth year seeing those guys, and we're tired of seeing them, and they're probably tired of seeing Fred and Ron. So it's, it's an easy scout for both teams. You know what to expect. You know you're going to get – some great motion offense from Evansville. Uh, they got the probably the premier big guy in the league, and uh, Big E, and the way he's rebounding the ball and blocking shots and whatnot. Uh, and they've got some good complementary pieces as well. I mean, Adam Wing is playing well. Their guards keep getting better. So uh, we expect a tough game. And then what Barry's done is nothing short of amazing with, with Southern Illinois. So we've got uh, got a tough week, as it turns out. You know, at the end of this week, there'll only be a maximum of two unbeated, team, two unbeated teams, maybe maybe only one. Greg, yeah, you're, the health of your team has been well documented, but you've certainly gone through a rash of injuries, and everybody's back except for uh, Landry Shamick. Can you update his progress? I know you're not expecting him back few more weeks. Yeah, I, I don't want to talk about him every week. It's going to be middle of February, so we can start talking about him about the 10th of February, something like that. All right, we'll put that on hold. Let's get to the questions now for you. Questions for Coach Marshall. Please press star then the number one. Again, that's star then the number one to ask your question. Our first question is from Daniel Alar with the Evansville Courier. Hey, Greg. I know in uh, past years um, you pretty much stuck uh, to Kel Cotton on Valentine, and he chased them around uh, the entire game. Are you, do you guys have a, an individual defender that's on that kind of level, or is it a different mindset with trying to defend a guy, guy like that this time around? Well, I don't, I don't. I mean, Jaquel definitely guarded him. I don't want to take anything away from Jaquel Cotton, but Jaquel Cotton didn't play 40 minutes, and, and Valentine usually plays about 36, 38 minutes. Um, I don't know if you were at the games, but Fred, Fred Van Vliet, uh, and especially Ron Baker have guarded him as well. And I think people minimize, or, or because of the, the other things that those two guys do, they, uh, they, they don't look at the quality of defenders that they are. 
I mean, those guys are all league defenders in their own right. And uh, I think Ron certainly has guarded him, and we'll, we'll have to guard him some. And, and uh, Zach Brown is another guy that will chase all those screens and, and uh, have to guard him as, as well. Um, we uh, Mike mentioned the injury history this year, uh, obviously getting some guys back. Do you feel like you're getting – Getting that that continuity back that uh, that maybe you were missing earlier with with so many guys being out. Yeah, we're we're doing we're doing much better. I mean, at one point, if you put a value on players that were out, I mean, we were out. We were without four of our top six or seven guys, and uh, with with Anton Grady, Fred Van Vliet, um, Landry Shamit, and and Connor Frankamp. So it made it very difficult. You know, it was Ron Baker and a bunch of, and Evan Wessel and a bunch of newbies. So, you know, you see what happens when you have to play a bunch of new guys like Bradley's having to do now. It's hard. So getting Fred obviously is a big key and then getting Anton back and Connor becoming eligible at the uh, semester is, um, it's helped us not only in games, but it's, it's helped us in practice get, uh, that's where you work on the continuity and, and guys learn how to play with one another. Thanks, Greg. Thank you. Again, stars in the number one to ask a question. You mentioned Connor Frank having certainly getting getting him uh, into the lineup was a, important for you. Uh, first couple of games, he looked like he was pressing a little bit. He seems a little bit more natural stroke is coming to him. Yeah, I mean, it's... The first game here in Wichita, I think, was a UNLV game in Cochabina, and then we played uh, Utah down at Intrust. So depending on the venue, you had 10,500 or 15,000 people collectively holding their breath every time he pulled the trigger, hoping the shot would go in. That's a little... And then it didn't go in, and, and there's a groan. So uh, that subsided a little bit. Uh, let me just shoot it and play without hanging on every release of a jumper. But um, hey, he's, he hadn't played in a while. It's been since uh, March of 2014, so about a year and a half since he had played in a competitive game. He's getting more comfortable and trying to do more each and every game. Thank you, Coach. There are no other questions in the queue for you. Thanks for your time, and good luck this week. Okay, you guys have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Greg. This does wrap up our call. We will not have a media roundtable. We only have a few beat writers on this week, so we will not have one this week. We'll initiate that next week. We'll ask the beat writers to stay on after next week's call, and um, this does conclude our call. Thank you for your participation.